Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. So today and for the next few days, we are going to be going over a series that Amberlynn did called The Struggles Being Me. Now one quick little fun fact to notice is that Amberlynn actually filmed all three of these videos on the same day. She just changed her shirt in between, which doesn't really matter, but I just think it's funny. So anyway, we're gonna start with part one today. So ready, let's go. Hey guys. Okay, so this is a three-part series that I wanted to do, Struggles Being Me. So this is my first series ever. I don't know how this is going to pan out or how it's going to go, but what this is, is I'm going to be talking about 10 struggles per video, so there's three uh, parts. So there's going to be 30 struggles that I experience as being a morbid, obese person. So we're going to hear about 30 struggles. That seems like a lot. <laughs> but go ahead, Amberlynn. We're listening. So these might not happen to other people. That's why I ca am calling this struggles being me. Because saying it as, you know, struggles being obese or, you know, everyone is different and everyone struggles differently. And I think that's why I wanted to to make this is because I wanted people to see what I experience because there's so many different types of stereotypes for people my size and I just want to share with you which ones are true for me. Um, okay so are these stereotypes that are true or are these struggles like I'm confused but let's continue. Um, I will say that all of these are pretty embarrassing some of them are obvious but I think part three of this series for me is the most embarrassing because I saved some of like the worst ones for last because it's like, oh my God, I don't know if I want to talk about those. But girl, I don't know if you know this, but that's what we're here for is the embarrassing stuff. So feel free to tell us everything. Anyways, um, this is just me being vulnerable and let's just get into the first part series of the series. What? Okay, yes, let's get into it. We are so ready. Okay, so number one is back pain. That's kind of like an obvious one. I suffer from really bad lower back pain. Um, I have been to a chiropractor. This was years ago. And he did tell me that I have a bulged slash slipped disc and that sometimes my spine can get swollen this word is hard for me to pronounce but I also experience hip bursatitis I am bad at pronouncing that word so I know it's because my stomach is really big and I also have a really really big butt oh my god so there is a divot like near my bulged slashed slip disc so when I am standing even for just like two minutes I am in excruciating pain that's my alarm I'm gonna stop that I am in excruciating pain like just horrid pain sometimes I can't even take a full breath and I know it's because of my weight because it's gotten worse as I've gained weight and it's, it's embarrassing because even just waiting in the line to see a movie for two minutes, I'm like, oh my god, it hurts so bad. Like, it's embarrassing. You can see the pain written on my face. Okay, first of all, we've got a few words we need to correct. The word is bursitis, not bursitis. And of course, we all know excruciating. She means excruciating. But anyway, let's talk about her back. I find it interesting that at the end of the clip, she says it's embarrassing. I feel like that's a very interesting word to use because I don't know how her pain could be embarrassing to her. Maybe she means it's embarrassing that she can't stand for very long, like she's needing to find somewhere to sit down. But to me, that would be more of an incentive to lose weight. What would be embarrassing to me is that I'm in this horrible pain, but yet I decide to keep over eating like that would be embarrassing that I am causing myself pain and not doing the one thing I know that would make the pain go away so number two is also a pretty obvious one I am less energetic um, as I gain more weight I feel more lethargic and just kind of fatigued I 
I don't have the energy I used to have and I, I miss it like I miss it a lot you know in my head I'm like I want to go play mini golf yes oh my gosh because I still remember myself as this person who was a lower weight but then when I actually go do these things I'm just like it's it's pathetic it kind of ruins a lot of experiences for me and I can't even control it okay up until she said that last sentence I was with her I was like yes that must be so difficult I mean imagine strapping a few hundred pounds onto your body and trying to walk around like that and of course you would feel out of breath and tired all the time but at the end when she says she can't control it I don't really know what she's talking about of course you can control it you are the only one who can control what goes in your mouth I don't know maybe she meant something else and I just didn't pick up on it but let's continue. Number three is I can't ride rides at amusement parks. That's pretty obvious. I feel like also, um, I'm bigger. I can't experience, you know, fun things. I'm 27 years old. I want to be able to experience certain things in life and I just can't because of my weight. My weight literally stops me from doing things like riding roller coasters. Although I have rode roller coasters before. This was at Disneyland and I was around 420 pounds then. So that's about 90 pounds lighter than I am now. Um, but I'm talking about, you know, rides at like Six Flags or like King's Dominion or um, fairs. I can't, I, I can't fit in any of that. I can't even walk in the amusement park to get to said rides, but that's a whole other struggle that I deal with, but we're not on that one right now. Okay, so she says that she is around 510 pounds in this video, and yeah, that would suck if you are someone who likes to ride roller coasters and aren't able to fit on one. She could lose half her weight and still possibly not be able to fit on one. Um, there's a very good chance that she'll never be able to fit on another one, but again, that should be more incentive to lose the weight. Number four is lack of cute clothing. I will say I try my hardest to find cute clothing, but I feel like I can't do the, tr I hear this a lot from people that are bigger. They can't express themselves with their own raw, true style like they would if they were smaller. And I completely experienced the same thing. I feel like I don't really know who I am. Am I girly? Am I more darker? Um, am I chic? Am I hipster? Am I like an old woman? Like, <laughs> I don't know my style because if I find something that fits for me, I take it and I run, girl, because it's hard. And sometimes I'll like find something that fits me and I'm like, I want one in every size, every freaking design, just give it to me. Because it's hard to find cute clothes that fit me. I think that makes sense, but I also feel like if she was smaller, I really don't think her style would change that much. I mean, we saw when she lived in Virginia with Crystal, what her style looked like, and she says that she was 300 and some pounds back then, so she would have been able to fit in a lot more types of clothing, and she still pretty much wore the same thing that she wears now, so I guess would be that her style probably wouldn't change very much if she was smaller. Number five is needing an expensive scale. So because I'm so much bigger, I can't just go into Walmart or like TJ Maxx and be like, okay, I need to buy me a scale. No, because most of those only go up to like 260 pounds. Some of them go up to like three something. That's pathetic. Like that is so pathetic. The scale that I have now is over three hundred dollars i did wait until it went on sale so i did buy it for around 160 that's freaking ridiculous i am currently using a scale that they use at like car shops to measure car parts like no that's that's horrible like i shouldn't be at this size i shouldn't have to buy a scale that's that expensive. Like I should be able to go into any store and just buy a scale. Literally being bigger is more expensive. I mean, you could always weigh in like the Slayton sisters did. I never weighed at a junkyard. Step right up. <laughs> Four 
406. I kind of have a hard time understanding in some of these if she's blaming herself or if she's blaming other people. Like, it sounds like she's blaming herself for being so big that she has to buy an expensive scale to weigh her, but then it also sounds like she's blaming the stores for not carrying those scales and having them be cheaper. So if she's blaming herself, I agree with her. If she's blaming the stores, I disagree with her. So number six is housework is hard. You know, things like mopping because it hurts my back. Doing the dishes is horrid on my back. That is like the number one most painful thing I can do is wash dishes. I literally am like my second dish in and I am just crippling in pain. It hurts so freaking bad. Um, just regular house chores, you know, cleaning out the litter box hurts my back. Just everything makes me so like, like tired, but that's another struggle that we're going to talk about. But everything is just kind of painful and makes me breathe really hard. And I feel like I just can't get any job done without feeling like I'm an absolute whale. It's embarrassing. It's a, it, I am, I'm embarrassed for myself, but I'm also embarrassed for the people who have to watch me breathe like that and act like that and be in that kind of pain. Okay, that was kind of a weird way to put it at the end there. She, why would she be embarrassed for the people that have to watch her? I don't really understand that, but I do believe that she is in pain when she's doing those things. However, I personally feel like she probably uses that to her advantage. She, I'm sure, says, well, I can't do the dishes. I can't clean the litter box. I need you to do it because it causes me so much pain, which is pretty shitty in my opinion. Number seven is I'm too big for gym equipment. This kind of, like, uh, this one hurts a lot because this is a new, this is a new struggle. Um, I went to the gym a couple months ago and I was like, yes, let's do this. I'm so freaking excited because I remembered how I used to feel at the gym. I used to feel so good. I love the elliptical. The elliptical is my jam. So first thing I do is I got on the treadmill and I was, I turned it on and I was trying to walk and it wouldn't move. I was too heavy. The little, um, you know, the thing that moves the belt or whatever, it wouldn't move. I was too heavy. And I was like, are you serious? This is so embarrassing. Like I was so embarrassed. So I was looking around and I found some bigger um, treadmills. So I went and got on those and they worked, but it was just kind of pathetic that I couldn't, you know, use the treadmill that I wanted to go on from the begin with. So I ended up um, going on the treadmill for, you know, it was probably like eight minutes. And then I went to go to the elliptical, which I was super excited, super excited for. So I got on the elliptical and I pressed play and every single time I'd start moving, it was like flashing. It was like, pause, pause, pause. And it was because I was too big. I literally was like breaking the machine, I feel like. So that's one of the reasons why I'm currently not going to the gym because it's embarrassing. It's like, I can't even fit on the freaking equipment. Like, what? She seems so shocked by this, but like, honestly, Amberlynn, you're 500 pounds over 500 pounds and you're surprised that the gym equipment doesn't work for you. I'm surprised that she even thought it would be an option for her. I mean, if it were me, I would just go for walks around the neighborhood, take Twinkie for a walk. Or if you want to be indoors where it's nice and cool, then walk around at the mall or at the Walmart. Like, a gym is not necessary. Or clearly now she knows it's not even an option. Number eight is I can't ride a bike, I can't go camping and things like that. Which freaking sucks so bad because as a little girl, I would go camping all the time. Um, back then I didn't care about like bugs and stuff. Now, now I do care. So, I mean, I miss camping, but I don't miss that part. But the whole riding the bike thing affects me the most because even as a little girl, I loved riding bikes. I 
would still love riding bikes if I could fit on one, but I can't. I am way too big. I don't even think I could do it, to be honest. Um, there is a bike that I want if I ever, ever get to the weight that I need to be at. And it just sucks because it's like little things like that, I feel like people take for granted. And it's like, I can't even do simple things like that. And it just sucks. And I feel like I'm kind of like living in a cage and like I, I can't do anything and people always wonder why does Amberlynn go out to eat all the time why is that the only thing she does and why does she go to the movies it's, all, it's because that's all I can do right now yeah something tells me even if she was smaller she would not enjoy camping which hey not everyone does but I think she would totally be the type of person to sit and just complain the whole time or if she did go camping she would want one of those luxury RVs and she would stay inside of it the whole time and I do think that makes some sense that she only ever goes shopping or goes to the movies because it's really all she can do but I also do think she uses that as an excuse and doesn't even try to do other things number nine is that towels can't fit around me obviously normal size like shower towels they can't fit on me they probably fit like half of my body um so I tried getting larger towels before and even those don't fit around me that's just a struggle I have to deal with it might not be a big deal to some but I would love to be able to step out of the shower and wrap a towel around me and I can't do it that one I feel like is not that big of a deal. I mean, she can find ways to work around that. She can just dry off and then get dressed. Um, not really sure why she needs to put a towel around her, but I get it. Like the fact that she can't, even if she wanted to, yeah, that does probably suck. And I'm sure there's probably not any robes that would fit her either. So I get it. It's kind of like a luxury that she can't partake in. So the last one for part one of the series is bras and underwear are super uncomfortable for me. I can't seem to find the right type of underwear. I can't seem to find bras. Bitch! You scared me! I'm being serious in this video. What? I said I'm being serious in this video and you scared me. I can't. Eric just scared the crap out of me. I can't seem to find like underwear and bras that are comfortable. Um, I've been wearing the same bras. I do have more than one. It's like a freaking crazy conspiracy. But as you guys know, hi. <laughs> I've been wearing the same bras for years now because I can't find any that are as comfortable as these because this is just what I'm used to. And underwear they're either riding up or they're like cutting me in areas they shouldn't be i just i can't find comfortable undergarments like at all and it just sucks really bad but that's another struggle of being me so i know amberlynn has now discovered torrid and she buys all her undergarments from there which is good but i don't understand why she didn't do that earlier because even before torrid there was lane bryant there was woman within i'm sure there were plenty of other brands that she could have found her size in i almost kind of assume that if they didn't carry it at Walmart or TJ Maxx and she just assumed that they didn't have it anywhere but yeah that would probably suck having to wear underwear and bras that don't fit so I really hope you guys enjoyed this video this is like just me being raw and like wow <laughs> some of these things that I have shared or I'm going to be sharing is just hard for me to share um, it's just, it's reality for me. So I will see you guys in part two. Bye. All right, you guys. So we made it through part one, the first 10 struggles of being Amberlynn Reed. I hope you guys will join me tomorrow for the next 10 and hopefully things get a little juicier. <laughs> But I hope you guys enjoyed watching this with me. I had so much fun watching it with you. If you did enjoy it, please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to leave me a comment down below.